In this tutorial, we will go through luminosity masking. The Luma Range tool allows you to limit a mask to areas of the image depending on brightness values. It's a great way to create complex and useful masks in very little time. Let's get started. So the first step is to create a mask, either by brushing one in or simply adding a new field layer. The mask can then be modified with Luma Range values by clicking here on the Luma Range button. Here I can adjust the mask using the various controls. The range knobs are used to limit the mask to certain brightness areas of the image. For example, the shadows or the highlights. Per default, a small fall off is set to blend the edge transition of the mask slightly. The fall off can also be adjusted by dragging the corresponding knob, which will make a harder or smoother transition. The entire range can be moved by dragging in the center, like so. Holding down shift and dragging the range knob will lock the current fall off value. Similarly, holding down shift and adjusting either of the fall off knobs adjusts the shadow and highlight fall off simultaneously. The radius and sensitivity sliders can be used to shape the edge quality of the mask. Let me show you on this image. With a high sensitivity value, the mask will be more refined towards the edges. With a low sensitivity value, the edge of the mask will have a soft feather. So basically it acts like a slider from soft to refined. The radius slider affects the strength of the sensitivity slider, like so. When you're happy with your settings, click Apply. Masks with the Luma range applied are indicated by this icon. The Luma range is dynamic and can be adjusted at any point from the dialog. With the mask created, I can now use different tools to edit my image, affecting only the masked area. Another powerful way to use luminosity masking is in combination with radial and linear masks. This can be useful if you like the fall off effect these masks give, but want some additional control. Let's take this landscape image. I'll use the linear gradient mask just to create a nice fall off on this image. But now I want to use the Luma range just to restrict the fall off to the sky, leaving the foreground untouched. Let's limit the shadow areas a little and adjust the fall off and also control the mask down into the midtones. And finally, I'll adjust the radius and sensitivity to wrap around the trees nicely. Now any change I make will be just to my linear gradient mask with the Luma range applied. Masks are still adjustable even after a Luma range has been applied. Let's take this image with the mask and Luma range applied. If I raise parts of the mask, and brush some of it back in, it will respect the Luma range. If I want to brush outside of the Luma range, I first need to rasterize the mask. Just right click on the layer and choose rasterize mask. Now I can brush in anywhere on the image, like so. A powerful feature of Luma range masks is the ability to copy the range from one image to another. This will copy the mask with the same Luma range applied, effectively giving you a different mask if your composition is different. So first of all, I've set the Luma range for this image. I'll shift select the remaining two. And then in the layers tool, if I shift click on the copy apply icon, and the Luma range is copied across to the other two images. Finally, to help visualize Luma range masks as you create them, remember that the grayscale mask can help to adjust them to your preferred result. 
choose it here, or use the shortcut Alt M. Areas shown in white indicate the masked parts of the image.